Thanks again for joining me. And if you've been following along, you'll know that I recently was able to get my 1977 Fiat 124 barn fine running for the first time in 25 years after a meticulous rebuild of the cylinder head, which I attempted for my very first time in my life, uh, only to have catastrophic failure and shards of cylinder head suck through my engine. Now on that terrible disappointment, I've decided to just simply try to slap this thing back together as quickly and as cheaply as possible. Uh, I'm not gonna go overboard on anything. And uh, we're gonna start today by tearing the old stuff apart. I've procured a new used cylinder head from another 1977 Fiat 124 Spider, and we're gonna put it on and we're gonna see what happens. Let's find out. <laughs> Okay, so after disassembling the head, I'm able to get a little better indication of what happened. And you can see the, the most damage is obviously the intake valve on cylinder number three broke completely off and then lodged itself inside the head, embedded the head. And I'm, I'm not sure which came first, but at some point the valve seat associated with that also came loose, disintegrated, and then somehow was able to pass through into cylinder number two and into cylinder number one. And you can see some of the damage where all those pieces bounced around um, for a couple of rotations until the engine quit and caused quite a bit of damage on the head. Obviously the most severe stuff, this could all probably be cleaned up and no big deal, but that seat in that area is, is pretty bad. In fact, it even, I think it messed up the, the threads for the spark plug hole slightly when some pieces hit the spark plug um so overall though the rest of the cylinder head seems okay but at some point something inside here um crossed over and um was getting oil into the coolant at some point so i think there's more damage inside than than can be shown from right here but so when we look at the corresponding damage we'll take a look I um, was able to clean the uh, block off and take a look at the pistons, and they don't look good. Um, you can see there's some definitely some damage where that valve broke and hit. And then you can see how the pieces of the valve seat sharded like glass and just ripped chunks out of um, all both of these cylinders. Now, surprisingly, the cylinder walls um, on all of them are very smooth. I'm not quite sure how that's possible. I think basically the fragments got embedded in here and then didn't move. Um, so I've grounded down a little bit just off some of the high spots and um, I, I don't see any holes that go all the way through. Now I'm not sure, um, but you know what? I don't care. Um, I do have another extra piston um, that I can swap out if I really need to, you know, obviously I could get some more if there's some, if there's some problems with it, but you know what, at this point I am, um, I'm going to start, I'm just going to slap this new head on here and bolt it down real quick without anything, no accessories on it. I'm just going to spin it around a few times, see if it holds any compression. And if it does, I'm just going to, I'm going to go for it and we're going to see if we can, uh, see if I can get this thing running in record time. All right, let's try it. Okay, let me get you caught up a little bit. I, uh, I cleaned off the new cylinder head that I bought, um, cleaned up pretty nice, and everything looks to be pretty good shape. It's just a little dirty, 
and I slapped it on. I just snugged it down. Uh, I didn't torque it to spec. Uh, I just wanted to get it on there and I ran a compression. It's just a cold compression on every cylinder. And it went uh, uh, pretty good until I got to the cylinder number three and it had zero compression. Um, all the other three cylinders had a little bit, um, pretty decent compression. So three was no bueno. Um, so I decided to pull the piston. I figured the piston, this is the one that got damaged the most. Um, this is the cylinder that the valve broke in. So I figured there must be some catastrophic damage inside that cylinder. So I, I figured the only way to find out why there was zero compression is just to tear it apart. Um, I don't have a lift or a hoist. So I did it the old fashioned way and I just pulled the oil pan while the engine is in the car, which is challenging. Um, but it worked. I got it off. I, uh, I got the piston, as you can see, pulled off here. And honestly, just my first glance, I haven't even really wiped it off yet. It doesn't look, um, it doesn't look bad. Um, obviously there's the, the gashes here on the top. And I just, I have to assume that one goes all the way through. Um, but I can't see, I can't see anything underneath that would cause me to believe um, the rings all seem to be intact. I think I don't see any other strange marks on the skirt. Um, so I have to believe that maybe one of these gouges must just go through um, and it's just letting all the compression blast right by. Um, so that's where I'm at now. I'm going to go ahead back over and inspect the cylinder walls to see if there's any damage there, which um, I don't think there are because I already kind of checked that before I pulled the piston out. Um, and then I will um, disassemble the piston next. And if everything looks good uh, on the block, I guess I will probably remove all the pistons, I assume would be a good idea, and maybe just upgrade them while I've got it open. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. It didn't go quite as well as I thought. Um, anyway, that's where we're at now. And uh, I'll just keep chugging away. All right, I'm in the process of doing a, a little bit of a mini rebuild here on the head. <clears throat> you can see I've kind of gone through and just going one by one and um, pulling the valves and cleaning them and relapping them, uh, inspecting them and then replacing any that look a little um, worse for the wear if I have a, a better replacement. Um, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube on, on how to change a valve. Um, but I'll go ahead and just do one real quick just to get, show you guys kind of my process and uh, just kind of step you through a little bit how um, about how I go about it. Not that it's right or wrong way, but that's how I do it. Um, but obviously, just start, I start with my, just my $20 Amazon special valve spring compression tool. And uh, I like to put one of the buckets on the face of the valve. And then we'll start to put a little pressure 
right on the valve spring. Let's see if we can get that going. All right. Okay. Let's make sure it's lined up right on that seat, the valve spring. Make sure it's centered on the back side of the valve here. We'll give it a few twists so we can start to compress that spring. I've got safety glasses on, you guys can't see, but I'd recommend that because sometimes if these things get a little squirrely. Now I like to uh, give a little wiggle after, uh, after I get a little tension on there. And sometimes that, there we go, just popped a little bit. And essentially it's just taking some pressure off that um, retaining clip that's in there. So once we got that got loosened up, it should compress pretty, pretty easily here. Just try to keep it centered so it doesn't pop off. And then you can start to see the retaining clips inside this bucket um, are starting to come out already. And then I usually just grab a magnet tool, pull those clips out. There's one. You know, if the other one gives you a little problem, just kind of pull it out. All right. And once you got that, the retaining clips out, it's just a matter of just taking the pressure off spring back it off nice and easy okay that's pretty much all there is to it I'll pull the, the tool off try not to drop everything on the floor pull the valve springs off and we can push the valve right out through the back there we have it, that's our intake valve for number one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up with a water brush, some Scotch-Brite. Um, I'm gonna look at some of the other valves that I have that are, are, are a little bit more newer, see if any of those would be a better replacement. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up this whole area here for both the intake and the exhaust. Little brake cleaner, little Scotch-Brite, little wire brush. Try to be easy on the valve seats there, um, but they look like they're in pretty good shape. Um, and then I typically just use a, a valve lapping tool on the end of my screw gun, and we'll just um, we'll go back at it. We're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and relap these, check them all, and then reinstall the uh, the springs in the reverse that I just took them off. So let's get back to it. So I'm pretty happy with the condition of the head. It's cleaned up pretty nicely. I've got all the valves pulled off, relapped, cleaned up, and I think it's in pretty good condition. I think I'm just gonna run with that. Um, I feel pretty good, but I, what I don't feel good about is the pistons. I think I got to show you guys already. I've been working on this for a couple days now, um, but if you remember, they got tore up pretty good. You can see this one um, got a pretty good gash from the valve that broke off in it. Um, doesn't appear to go all the way through, but either way, um, some of the other pistons just got just got chewed up real bad by just shards of metal. Um, and so 
uh, I think it's best just to go ahead and swap those out. So while I'm messing with it, I just decided to upgrade. Got some, some nice, brand new, nice pistons. Um, a little dome top there to and improve the compression ratio. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble all those now, get them um, back on the connecting rods and hopefully get the rings installed and back in the block very soon. So follow along. <laughs> Okay, I have a little bit of success. I uh, have all the pistons assembled on the connecting rods. I have the rings installed. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I did struggle with the retaining C-clip for the wrist pin. Um, it was a bear to get each one of those in there, but I managed to do it. Um, I did bend a few in the process and had to pitch some, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I'll get them all cleaned up here shortly. Um, but before I get them installed in the block, we do have to prepare a few things, and that includes uh, reaming the ridge of the cylinders, as well as um, giving them a nice hone to, de to de deglaze them. So I'm gonna work on that next. I, uh, I have my ridge reamer here. I've never actually used this tool. I've never reamed a ridge before. I've never honed a cylinder. In fact, it's the first time I've ever held a piston in my life. So um, there's a good chance I'll mess this up, but I'm willing to jump in and try it. So you guys can follow along and see if we can get it right. Okay, probably no surprise to you guys, but I've watched exactly one YouTube video on how to ream the ridge of a cylinder. Now, he's number number three here. I mean, number two seems, feels the worst. I can just feel that with my fingertip. Um, this engine doesn't have a whole lot of miles on it, so they all feel pretty good, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my best here to see what we can get. Um, so in this case, you drop the, the reamer in this particular tool and then you turn the expansion nut until the reamer is snug, it says. There we go, it feels kind of snug. And then we're gonna try to lubricate a little bit around here. Except that I'm out of WD-40. Let me see if I got another can. Here we go. Here we go. Now, I assume you can use any kind of lubricant. Marvel's Mr. Oil, maybe even motor oil is probably okay. Go ahead and just get it wet with something. And then we're just gonna start turning it clockwise and let it do its thing. There it goes. Now this one's nice, it's got bearings on the feet that help align it to the cylinder walls. Just gonna bring it through a few times. But it's got a carbide blade that's just gonna scrape that, that ream flush. I'm just gonna give it a little feel. It's still got a little ways to go. Maybe add a little more here. Okay. Out a little. Here we go. Okay, I'm just tighten it up a little bit more. Okay. There we go. Let's 
loosen it back up now. Remove it. Feels perfect. Feels great. All right. Let's get that cleaned out. I'm going to go through and do the rest. We're going to have our ridges ring. where we are. I've got the ridge. Ridges all reamed. They feel great. I've got the cylinders honed and deglazed nicely. I've got everything real cleaned and degreased. And um, I've got my pistons ready. I've got them clocked. The rings clocked correctly, cleaned up real nicely. I've got my ring compressor on. I'm going to start with cylinder number two. Uh, I'm just going to get a little oil put in there and see if we can um, if we can slip this down in there and see how it goes. Okay, it's sat down on the crank there. Yeah, that looks good. <clears throat> okay. Gonna do number three next, and then I'll do the rest. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied. I have the pistons installed. I've made a lot of progress. Did a few things off camera, like um, cleaned up the bottom of the block. I got the uh, con rods uh, attached, including new bearings. The uh, caps are installed torque to spec. Um, I've got the oil pan cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna go over it one more time and get that installed underneath the car. Um, but I think that's gonna about do it for this video. We got a lot accomplished, but I still have a lot more to do. So I'm gonna split this one up and um, look forward in the next episode to um, valve adjustment on the uh, head. We'll get the cams installed. I, um, I wanna do some work on the electric. I'm gonna replace that brown wire with a nice new thick gauge wire. I'm gonna replace the clutch cable. Um, just a lot of miscellaneous things. I think I'm gonna pull the mechanical fuel pump off. And um, a lot of those things are gonna be a lot uh, easier to accomplish now that the engine's disassembled. So I might as well just get those taken care of now while I'm at it. So uh, in the next episode, look forward to all that. Plus, we're going to get the engine uh, buttoned back up. I hope to have it uh, reinstalled and ready to test run in the next episode. So stay tuned. You know, be sure to subscribe if you want to uh, if you want to be informed. So thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.